Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the July 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue livestream. Last month we were inspired by time, by a beautiful red alarm clock with accents of black, white, a little bit of sort of a sand color from the backdrop, and then this aqua that was in the hands of the clock. And during the live stream, we created five different colorways, three variegated and two semi-solid or tonal colorways. But there's one that I didn't finish in the live stream. And it's one where the dyeing is simple, but I really want to over dye this zebra base. Or not over dye, but dye this zebra, zebra base from wool to dye for. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. This two-ply yarn has some gorgeous variation in it already. The plies are either two-ply, sort of the bare color, a ply of black and bare, and then there's also some uh, more variation where it's more of a gray because the black and white have been sort of spun, uh, blended a bit in the spinning. So I think that this will be really fun and I want to over dye it with the red that we used. I could think of many different ways to add color to this, but I think I'm going to go pre-soak it for about 20 minutes in some plain tap water and then using some of the red from our live stream, we will dye this red. In the live stream, we dyed two different tonal colorways. With the red, we had about one and a half grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And for the black, we had two grams of black per 100 grams of yarn. We dyed both Knit Picks Swish DK and Knit Picks uh, Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Swish is 100% Superwash Merino and Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. If you want to learn more about these berry yarn bases, I do have affiliate links in the video description. The reason why I'm bringing up these colorways now instead of just waiting until later when they're dry is that you can already see that there is some variation in the depth of shade of our red. It wasn't super well mixed, but these are definitely more tonal than the black where it's hard to say right now if there's tonal variation. It feels a lot more semi-solid. It'll be a little easier to evaluate once the yarn is dry. The other reason, again, why I'm bringing this up is so this was about a one and a half percent depth of shade. And I think I want around that, but maybe a little less. Right here I have 300 milliliters of a half percent dye stock. So I might just use about 200 milliliters of this to go for a one percent depth of shade on our Zebra Highland yarn base. This pot is filled with some water and a leftover pre-soak from the stream. The pre-soak that I had with some vinegar, I just put all of that into this pot. And now we're going to add a little under I think I'm aiming for a little under one cup, so between, I would say, 200 and 240 milliliters. So it's about a little over one gram of dye. So there's acid in the dye pot, but there is not yet any heat. And I'm now going to add the zebra yarn. I think is beautiful and I am gently moving it through so that way the dye can access all of the fiber. Um, there will probably be some tonal variation in here but I'm okay with that. I just think that the pop of the black against the red is going to be really really beautiful. So now I'm going to turn on the heat and we'll heat it for about 30 minutes or until the dye has cleared. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the temperature, and let's see. We still have some color in here. For some reason, I think this red has been bleeding for me a bit today. I actually placed the tonal red yarns back in another pot just to, uh, I'll go get a new thing of vinegar. I'm gonna add a nice splash of vinegar here to our dye pot and I'm going to turn off the heat and let this cool slowly over the next few hours in here. 
Uh, and then once it's cool, I will wash it and we'll include it with the conclusions with the rest of the yarn we created for this dye along. But I did want to mention that it only seems to be the tonal red yarn, but that did have some bleeding um, that I'm addressing in the ways that I address bleeding. So it's soaking in a warm pot of water and vinegar and I'm letting, I didn't reheat it, but I'm gonna let it sit in that for a while and cool again. I mentioned that I was having some bleeding issues with the red. And as I unwrapped this and started washing it, I decided to wash uh, the red and black ends first to try to keep any bleed from happening on the white. And I think that the little bit of pink that we see right here is from the technique because we didn't have guar gum. And I actually have it such that there is minimal, minimal bleeding now. And I'm going to try to wash the whole skein. I'm bringing this up because if you're worried about bleeding, it's worth doing a little check on your yarn before you make a project. Um, especially if you have white and red or there's some blues that might potentially bleed. But that's looking more pink with the yarn in it than it does with the yarn out just because of the way the light is reflecting. So um, it's not bad anymore. But if you're also concerned, it could be worth throwing a color catcher that you might use in the laundry in your soak when you're blocking a project uh, just to have something in there to help absorb any dye that bleeds out if you're worried about bleeding. But I'm not going to wash the whole thing. And I plan to do a similar thing with this one. I will wash the red and the black ends before washing the middle speckled portion. We're now going to wash our yarn. I'm realizing Cherry Bomb is a little bit more berry colored as a red, especially as it's drying, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, there is a little some slight bleeding. The bleeding on the other yarn that I've been dealing with um, did resolve from you know, either a vinegar soak or a slight reheat. Um, and so if we have bleeding here, we will deal with it. There's a tiny bit of pink left in the pot, so I'm not surprised to see some slight bleeding now. This is not that, eh, it's there. Since this yarn is not super wash, I do want to be careful. But what I'm going to do, as we fill this up with water, I'm going to add a splash of vinegar and let this soak for a little bit because that little bit of acid helps things stop, which goes with my recommendation if you're concerned about bleeding and you're going to block something, add a little bit of acid. Anyway, I'm going to let this soak for a little bit. There's no bleeding now that we have acid in here. Um, and then I will rinse it a couple more times, put it through the spin dryer, hang it to dry. If there's another big resurgence of bleeding, I'll come back and show that. But otherwise, let's go look at all of the beautiful yarn we dyed in our live stream inspired by this alarm clock. We dyed a lot of yarn over the course of the July 2020 Chemnitz Dial Long live stream. And in addition to the bonus zebra yarn that we did at the beginning of this recap, uh, there's three different colorways we did on fingering weight yarn and five different colorways on DK. There's some overlap. We did a tonal red on both, a semi-solid black on both. And the reason why I'm referring to those differently as I guess I'll show you in a moment. You can, with your naked eye, really clearly see the tonal variation in the red. Reds are a little hard to film. It's very much more of a berry red than a true red, but we've got deep burgundy to lighter, almost slightly more pink patches. There is some tonal variation in the black as well. It feels it's sort of like, it's not as pigmented as it could be. I think for a deeper black, you might want a 4% depth of shade versus the 2% we have here. Um, so we do have some lighter and darker patches, but when you knit this up, there might be a little bit of depth and dimension, but these colorways are pretty close to being solid, which is why I would refer to these as a semi-solid and this a tonal just because I think that's a better description of how things might knit up. Now, why with the same technique do we see these differences? 
well, I think the black mixed up better than the red, and so the red had more clumps and chunks left, and so that could lead to the more unevenness in there. Um, I'm not mad about it at all. Uh, I love both tonals and semi-solids. These are some of my favorite colorways to knit with in the whole world. And in this case, it didn't matter if we were using the DK or the fingering weight. Uh, the DK is 100% superwash merino, the fingering is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the colors are similar whichever base we used. They absorb the dye at very similar rates. Even though we had some bleeding with the reds while we were watching, the middle of this variegated skein is white. I kept this by washing the pink end and the black end separately at first before washing everything together. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why I saw more bleeding than I'm used to today, but adding some acid to the soak uh, eliminates all of the bleeding. So I recommend uh, doing that when blocking this yarn to try to keep this white white. Uh, or you could add a color catcher to if you're going to block to the soak. Um, that is something else that I recommend. But this hand-painted colorway is a lot of fun. It's repeating, uh, not, not perfect, fairly regular. If we didn't want a little bit of halo here, the way to have avoided that little bit of pink would have been to have mixed our dye with a thickener like guar gum. Then we would have been able to have a sharper line versus it being a little more blown out. But I think that this is beautiful and the variegated skein pays so well with the tonals that we created as well. On our Swish DK base, there are three variegated colorways that we did that brought a few other colors into the mix. We have this aqua, and I'm now totally blanking on the color that we used, but that and some sand dune uh, to bring in some of the other colors from our alarm clock picture. The blue on the alarm clock is really, really, really subtle, but it was fun and that pop brings so much beauty into all three of these colorways. So this colorway was the yarn mop. I wiped my gloves off that had some dye powder on this over the course of dyeing these two colorways. This was done immersion, um, medium to low immersion, with some restraint to try to keep some white in here, which worked. And I'm very, very, very happy that that worked. Um, and I started with the paler colors, the blue and the sand dune and maybe a little gray, and then added the black and the red on top. So that way I could, it would be easier for me to try to keep some white and I'm thrilled. Uh, it doesn't read purple, it's just, it's perfect. Not necessarily perfect for the feel that you can feel when you look at the alarm clock picture, which has more crisp lines, but color-wise, I am thrilled. Even if I wish the red was maybe a little redder versus crimson, but I'm still thrilled. I love these colorways. Finally, I hand-painted this colorway and we did some, <laughs> quote, light speckles on the inside. And what's unique about this colorway is that I did not flip it many, many times. I added speckles to one side, flipped very carefully, did some speckling on the other. And since we were using just the dry powder directly on the yarn versus having the powder mixed with citric acid, the colors spread and bloomed a little bit. And I think that this colorway is just spectacular. Finally, we got amazing coverage on this zebra base. Unlike the other skeins, this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And the red feels, ex the coverage of the red feels really, really, really good. Uh, I'm not observing a lot of tonal variation, but I think one reason for that because I think the tonal variation exists, but I think because of the barber pole and the more gray and black uh, sections in here, I think that that is going to make it harder for us to feel that other tonal variation since there was the variation in the base to begin with. But I want more of these zebra bases to play with. What kind of colorways should I try on them? Clearly, they deserve more than just um, doing a solid over it, even though the solid is stunning. But yeah, what, how do you think I should dye them? And I'll try to pick up more next time I place a wool to dye for order. Which one of these colorways is your favorite? I 
like a lot of them and I could think of even more different kinds of colorways we could do all inspired by this alarm clock photo and in fact now is the time in the video where I'm going to feature some of the colorways you created inspired by the same photo. Did you go for a brighter red than the one I ultimately picked? Uh, what parts of this really excited and inspired you? There's so many different ways, so many different dye types, and people can look at one picture and come up with so many different possibilities, and I think that that is incredible. If you would like to be featured in one of these dye along recaps going forward, dye some yarn or some fiber or some fabric inspired by our inspiration photo, and then share it on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along, or reply to the dye along inspiration photo on the public Chemnitz Facebook page uh, with a photo comment, and I will pick some to feature in the recap. If the recap video has already come out, but you want to share your yarn with me, continue to share with the hashtag. Just maybe mention which month you were inspired by, uh, so that way there's not confusion when we're working on the next photo. Before the live stream, I sketched a lot of different photos. And I think of these, this is the one I did immersion style, where I just sort of placed different uh, sections of color. Uh, we did this on fingering weight. We did both of these semi-solids. And with a different color, we did something, I guess, like these two as well. That's a lot of colorways in one stream, especially now that the streams are shorter. But again, you can just see how many possibilities came to me as I looked at our alarm clock photo. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I publish at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week. Every Tuesday morning is an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and then Fridays are either a bonus Dye Pot Weekly or some other type of yarn dyeing video. And then we do streams like this and have a lot of fun, and you really don't want to miss any of it. The biggest way you can support the content is by engaging with these videos, watching, liking, commenting down below. But if you want to support the channel on another level, I do have an Etsy shop. Chemnitz Creations and a Patreon just under Chemnitz and those have some fun ways and with some cool perks whether yarn or shout outs and things like that that you can get. Um, you can find links to everywhere you can find me down in the video description. I've done my best to get the color to come through on the camera but right now as I'm looking at the monitor the color on the viewfinder looks red. The color I'm seeing in person is more crimson. This collection is still beautiful, but I think I need to play around with the different red acid dyes at my disposal to get a better feel of the relative hues that they are. Because in my head, I was thinking that fire red was a little bit more pink, and so that's why I went for cherry bomb. And this is more berry, which is beautiful, just not quite what I was going for. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this recap and look at the finished dry yarn. I, I love dyeing yarn, and I am having so much fun doing, whether it's pre-filmed or a live stream, I just have so much fun. And so thank you so much for joining me on this journey as I challenge myself to get better at playing with color. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.